The UK events industry has been through a tough time. Many businesses have been scaled back or been forced to stop operating, meaning a fight for survival. However, event professionals are also renowned for their creativity and resourcefulness. In this series of videos, I shall be meeting some of them and hearing their stories. Hopefully their experiences will comfort and inspire others. Today we're meeting Glenn Sutton, Managing Director of the Aventus Group. Glenn oversees a collection of high-profile brands providing catering, technical staging and event management. In a typical year, his company hosts over 300,000 guests from small parties to large-scale festivals. Could you just tell us in a, in a few sentences what you do? So, I'm Group MD for Aventus Group and we are a collection of hospitality businesses. There's nine brands in total and they span production companies, event caterers, uh, fixed venue contracts and we've also got a festival organising business too. So we're uh, heavily rooted in the events industry. All of our brands operate in, in, in one sense or another within that marketplace. We're a business that pre, pre the crisis you know, turned over almost 40 million a year um, in revenues uh, and so a big part of that marketplace and we've got the responsibility of managing, owning and being the custodians of many really well-loved brands in that part of uh, the hospitality industry. When did you first realise that Covid would have an impact on your business? Can you remember? Yeah, I can absolutely remember the uh, moment was um, mid-February 2020. Um, I was actually at a friend's house for lunch and her business is a big UK, US investment company. And one of our brands had a, a big event planned with them in, in just a few weeks time. And she took uh, a raft of calls that day. Uh, she was nonstop on the phone, even though it was a weekend, to her colleagues in the US um, who were already saying, you know, it's not going to be possible for us to put delegates on an airplane from New York to London. Um, we think this thing is, is getting out of control. Um, we believe that, you know, it won't be insurable, you know, there'll be the difficulties with, you know, safeguarding our employees. And I saw her wrestling with that that day and realised that this was going to be uh, a significant impact. It was, of course, only four weeks on from that when, when our world ground to a halt. And what, what was your initial thoughts? What did you think, you know, when you first realised that COVID could have an impact on the events industry? I guess my first thoughts were that, um, uh, like many people, there was sort of a blissful ignorance that we all lived in when we thought, well, you know, these things haven't really caused us too much trouble before. So I guess we were all in this false sense of security that, that it was probably just going to be another SARS, really, you know, maybe a bit of fuss about nothing. Um, and then as the, as the situation seemed to unfold and look a bit more serious, I think at that stage we still only thought, you know, maybe this is three months of disruption, three, four months. Um, you know, we'll, we'll put in some controls, we'll put in some mitigation, some border controls, some testing, and we'll, we'll be through the other side. And how has COVID impacted upon your business? The impact of COVID on the business has been uh, absolutely devastating. Um, we have had most of our brands and businesses mothballed entirely for almost 12 months now, which would have been completely inconceivable. Uh, the even idea that this could be possible would have been incredible, wouldn't it, just a year or two ago. But that's the situation we found ourselves in. Um, we as a business have tried to find opportunities, um, you know, look for openings and pivot our business towards new solutions during that time. But the reality is, the net effect is that the events industry has been closed for a year. And what sort of ideas or strategies have you pursued? Well, I mean, the obvious thing for, for events industry has been to kind of try and rotate their businesses towards, you know, retail offerings, you know, with events not um, being permitted and not being set, not being necessarily safe. Um, we tried all sorts of things this summer. So our festival business put on uh, a glamping season in Somerset. Believe it or not, we already we own bell tents and flagpoles and all the kind of things that make festivals exciting and fun. We sent a team out there to do that for a few weeks and they had an incredible time. Meanwhile, our production company um, used all the kind of equipment we've got, the AV equipment and production equipment we've got to, to, to put on some drive-in cinema. 
experiences around the UK too. And then in December, um, we had a, a, a fantastic reaction to a concept that we deployed at Sion House and at Somerset House. Um, we acquired these igloo dome structures from Germany and we created two dining experiences at both those locations. It was uh, The response was enormous. Um, I think within the first two weeks of going on sale, we had 7,000 reservations at um, Somerset House and uh, 4,000 reservations down at Sion Park. Uh, sadly, you know, our run was cut short by um, the third lockdown, um, but the reaction to that concept was brilliant. So I do always think our industry is good at that. You know, we'll always find new opportunities. The demand for hospitality experiences will always be there. Um, and, and with great teams, you can always respond to that. What was the most difficult of those changes that you had to make? Easily the, the, the hardest change um, was to do with team, was to do with staff. And that wasn't immediate, it was gradual. Um, but over, as weeks turned into months, and months um, b became half a year and we began to move towards 12 months. You know, we've had to see, you know, brilliant, talented, valuable people leave our business. And, um, you know, that really hammers home, you know, the, the harder responsibilities of management, of leadership. It's, it's the most difficult job, particularly when um, you're talking about you know, people you've worked very closely with and people whom you know are excellent in their field deserve a job, you know, um, and, 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 and deserve an opportunity to continue to perform and use their talents. And that has been the single most horrendous and awful thing about the whole crisis, no question. Has it had an effect upon you personally? Sleeplessness or anything? Yeah, absolutely. I think if you, if you go through this sort of um, situation and particularly with the people involved you know particularly when you talk about the human cost of it you know in terms of people losing their jobs if you don't lie awake at night looking at the ceiling and thinking about that then you know you, you've probably got bigger things to worry about you know you you might be a sociopath if you don't if, you, if that doesn't frighten you and keep you awake um, so you have to be prepared for that I think we've all found new depths of resilience that perhaps we didn't think we had. We've had to find them. Um, I believe that the, you know, the mental health of leaders and, and of staff and of employees in, in this business will have been enormously impacted at the end of this. There's been a huge cost in terms of that. What has frightened you? You know, the disease itself, you know, this has been a frightening time for us all. You know, you, you put business aside and you're worried for family and friends and colleagues, you know, on that level, on a, a, you know, from a health perspective. Um, and I guess, you know, biggest amongst those fears is that you won't be able to protect the jobs that you've created. Biggest amongst those fears is that, particularly in a business like ours where we've, you know, we've acquired some really well-known and well-loved brands and you feel a responsibility as a custodian of that business once you take it on. And the fear that you, you won't be able to protect that brand and that you won't be able to maintain it and pull it out the other side um, it is a real one. You don't want to be responsible for that. Mm. But always the hardest points and the, most, the points that cause you the most stress and fear and worry are, the, are around people always around the people that you've assembled and um, yeah, you know, having conversations with people about them leaving a business at a time like this um, is, is incredibly difficult, but much harder on them than it is on you. And you, you always come away from that conversation, you know, remembering that, realizing that. Is there anything that you wish you'd done? I often think about if there's anything I wish I'd done differently. Um, but I would say that so far, I'm not sure we have enough perspective on the situation to know that in, in reality. It's been so easy all the way through this crisis to look back even on decisions that I sometimes made two weeks ago and think, why on earth did I do that? And then you have to frame it by remembering, recalling 
the amount of information that was available to you just two weeks ago and how different it was to two weeks on. Um, I think, you know, throughout the, throughout the crisis, it's been so quickly evolving and we've all been subject to this 24 hour news cycle. And I think the big challenge for leaders has actually been to try and maintain some consistency in decision making during that bombardment of information. Um, I'm sure that at the end of this, there'll be many things that I did, that we did as a business that we'll look back and say, gosh, I wish we'd handled that. Had we known, we'd have done that so differently. Mm. Um, but I think it'll take us a good while longer at the other side of this to know which decisions were the right ones. Uh, it's been much harder for smaller companies, for smaller businesses. I think there are a lot of leaders and owners of businesses out there who felt very alone. Um, I think the antidote to that has been uh, that I've never seen so much cooperation and cohesion in our industry. You know, seeing the strength of support um, between colleagues in different businesses, you know, many of whom were previously rivals, you know, we were competitors with each other. We've come together, coordinated, pulled ideas, shared um, successes with each other in a way that I've never seen before. And I do think we'll emerge from this with a, a, a renewed sense of camaraderie with, with, the, with the other people that are in our industries. So where do you think we'll be in a year from now? I don't fear at all for the events industry in the longer run. I, my view is we've still got a very difficult 12 months ahead of us. Um, we will be one of the slowest sectors amongst all the sectors to recover in hospitality. You know, I do believe that restaurants and hotels will be able to spring back a little bit faster. Um, I think the private market in events, you know, weddings, celebrations, those sorts of things will come back a little bit quicker. There's lots of pent up demand, lots of people desperate to, to have those celebrations that they didn't have last year. Um, and assuming, you know, our vaccination program stays on course, I think that will return. I think we'll be up against some you know, greater difficulties when it comes to corporate events. Um, I talked on the way into this about how kind of insurance and liability was one of the first indicators that this was going to be difficult for us. And I think insurance and liability may be one of the things that prolongs, um, you know, this, this difficulty, this difficult spell for us. On the other side, we will need insurance businesses uh, to step up and provide the cover, uh, you know, the right levels of cover and assurance to people that they can gather people together in this way. But longer term, if there's one thing this experience I think has taught us all, it's that while there's so much we can do digitally now, there's so much we've been able to do remotely, I think we all know they don't even come close to the real experience. That's the truth of it. I really believe that actually on the other side of this, we'll all have a, an incredibly heightened sense of appreciation and of kind of absorption of an experience when we go to it, because we'll have um, had this kind of sensory deprivation now for a year or more. And the experience of walking back into an event, you know, um, tables dressed, candles lit, you know, drinks being served, people talking to each other, you know, laughter, you know, that kind of sense of anticipation, excitement. Um, there'll be no substitute for that. And I think, you know, we can take heart as well. You know, there's been many references to the only other pandemic we can remember this century, you know, the, the Spanish flu. And we know that after that, you know, we enjoyed a decade of the 20s, which became famous for decadence and socializing and partying. I really believe that 2022 will could be an exceptional year and could be a year when we see real meaningful recovery and and uh, as always uh, out of out of the ashes the emergence of really exciting new concepts and new ideas you know um, that's almost certainly on the horizon it's as it's always worked that way.